Hello and welcome to uh, Workplace Incentives presentation on Team Dynamics. I'm Andrew Ward and I'll be your session leader for this um, seminar. I hope you really enjoy it. Today what we're going to look at is where the differences in teams come from and how we can uh, maximise that for uh, the benefit of the organisation and the individuals. So without further ado, let's get started. So what's a team? Well, a team comprises a group of people linked in a common purpose. Teams are especially appropriate for conducting tasks that are in high in complexity and have many independent subtasks. A good team, well, we probably know this from our own personal experience. If you've ever been in a good team, you know that as an individual you get far more out of it. There's a different attitude. Uh, everybody is sort of moving towards the same goal. And, and one thing that I've noticed in developing teams over the last few years is that a good team will develop its own vocabulary, a sort of shortcut language that gives people an insight into how another team member is feeling rather quickly so that they can adapt to it. Um, there are a whole bunch of benefits, including getting more done. Now, a good team celebrates its victories together. Um, we know them in the sporting arena. Uh, we have many examples of fine teams here in Australia and when a team pulls together and, and brings the collective strengths that it has, it can unite those around them as well and inspire others to greatness. Um, <clears throat> at a work we tend to get less uh, examples of good teams. I love this photo because it shows a good team at work and I'd like to point out a few things if that's okay with you. First of all is that at the front of the um, uh, classroom here where the team is uh, engaged you can see a number of collaboration tools, a projector and a, a flip chart and you can see that this team has between seven to ten people in it um, which is a great size for team dynamics. Uh, three leaders are usually required within a team because if a team is to be doing a complex uh, a range of tasks that have interconnected subtasks, these collaboration tools, these leaderships of knowledge specific information coming together um, is what makes things happen. And just to bring your attention to the, the teammates here, uh, they're all actively listening. So uh, a good team doesn't need to have great amounts of resource. It can have a great leadership, great vision uh, and still engender great teamwork amongst the individuals and great results for all of those engaged. This is a picture of uh, WikiLeaks headquarters in Beirut and as you can see this team functions by there's somebody basically monitoring media, um, somebody almost full-time uh, producing stuff, two others full-time producing stuff and a hell of a lot of people vetting things in the background. This is not a glamorous workplace, uh, but I bet you it's a very effective one. Um, a bad team. Well, we've all probably uh, also had the experience of being in a bad team. Instead of um, the whole being greater than the sum of its parts, less actually gets done. It gives you a lack of confidence as an individual. Um, and uh, instead of a team where it's a good culture developing their own like vocabulary, a bad team is, is understood by the fact that no one gets anyone. Um, you, you might see a bad team able to celebrate and, and celebration is not equivalent to cooperation or, or productivity. Um, as you can see in this, the, this is obviously a very well paid, very well resourced team and each of the team members are looking in their own direction. They're delighted naturally but for themselves. Um, Look, a bad team um, it isn't helped by the images that we are given around us. You know, if teamwork were what this image suggests, we'd all be plastic people and we'd be putting together a jigsaw. Now, the fact is, um, we're not putting together a jigsaw, we're not plastic, we're humans. We have unique strengths, weaknesses, characteristics, personalities, modalities, and we'll go into all of these. But it, it certainly does not help. Um, that if you're, for instance, looking for a picture about teamwork on Google, this is the first thing that comes up. And I think it's very sad that it's very unpersonalized. 
And further to that, uh, we get the idea that a thermal bonds or very hard to create and maintain bonds are what holds a team together. And I think that's very dangerous because teamwork and team dynamics are a very real and effective way that management and leadership can get better outcomes for the business. Um, let's look at a team and the roles within a team. Obviously there are team members and that is everybody within the team. There's usually some leadership uh, which is required because you've got to have a vision, a goals, purpose, values within a team for it to hop operate at a level that's better than any one individual could do on themselves. Uh, management is required in a team, at least that's what I've uh, found personally to be effective and I'm sure you have as well. And management is focused on results and resource allocation. It's also got to be focused on what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. And then I'd like to introduce you to a term. Now this term is very important in team dynamics because it's followship which is ignored by most uh, business texts and, and people. And, and followership is just as important to team dynamics as leadership and management. In fact, if the leadership fails to provide uh, values and a goal and a vision for the team, well then the, the team is unlikely to know what they're going towards. But likewise, if followership doesn't apply in a team, well then... Uh, that's not a team, that's an individual. So followership is the ability to apply yourself, to complete what you've set out to achieve, especially if other people are requiring your work to do their subtask work. Joining in is a huge part of it. Um, and one of the things that people seldom remember is that it's in the followership where creativity often is. It's in when the resources have been allocated and the, the goal is known and, and it takes an individual to create uh, the resulting product. Uh, so the followership has a whole bunch of creativity and of course you do the work. So why, um, uh, why is this important? Well. I guess if we know that we've got these roles and we know that we're actually people in an organisation that bring together the team dynamics, we first of all need to get our foundations right. And we need to understand that because the team is made of people and people view things differently, you can have quite interesting dynamics evolve. Um, let's look at a few of these in brief. I love this ad by HSBC which shows um, the same image and how it's interpreted by many people. So as you can see we could have a uh, survivor style or soldier as any interpretation of the same um, picture and of course if you've got a vision or a picture that you've created as the leadership and you've passed this on um, to the other team members, their backgrounds and beliefs are going to affect how they actually take in that information. And whilst we're talking, um, uh, people have a, a range of modalities. So you can know this um, and you can know your own modality by understanding what happens when you get an idea for the first time. If you're a visual person, you might say, ah, I see. Or if you're an auditory person, yeah, I hear you. Or if you're a kinesthetic, you'll be like, ah, I get it, that makes sense now. Um, modalities affect the capacity for people to take in information. If you are providing a visual representation to auditory or kinesthetic people, they will not be getting the benefit of the information to the same extent as if you're providing visual information to a visual modality. So matching the type of communication with the audience modality is very important. Um, I'd also like to bring your attention to personality types. So uh, the most common personality type that you'd be familiar with is the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator or the MBTI. As you may know or may not know, um, that measures along a few indices. So your tendency towards extroversion or introversion, which is your tendency towards uh, gaining energy from interaction with others or gaining energy from yourself. So within a team you might have extroverts and introverts and the extroverts require other people to energize and the introverts feel drained by that same action. So dynamics definitely start to play here. 
Um, intuitive and sensitive people, which are represented by an N or an S, uh, come to look at data with intuition or, or sensory uh, requirements where they need it proven. Uh, thinking or feeling, which is the T or the F, uh, pretty much says what it does on the box. There are people who make uh, an emotional decision uh, and you'll hear them use vocabulary like, I feel it's not quite right. And you'll have people who are thinkers say, oh, I just don't think it's right. And they're both saying the same thing, but they've got very different uh, reasons as to why they're making that and they're coming from a completely different place. And the J and the P in the Myers-Briggs type indicator is uh, judging or perceiving. And that's the ability for somebody to either uh, perceive without judgment or to judge and to define. And these combinations or tendencies that each individual has go some way into explaining um, if you understand what people are, how they will uh, react or what they will react well to or react negatively to. Um, and if you don't understand them, you may continually fall foul of communicating to people in a way that they don't understand. So there is not just the Myers-Briggs type indicator, there are Jung characters, there are the DISC profile which you may have come across, um, or the ARMS profile. Uh, the point of this is mainly to say that we all bring a unique person into a team and that creates the dynamics. So uh, teams are made from people as we've discussed and in, in people we find uh, other places where we strongly communicate communicate and that's with our significant others and let's understand that at work you're spending time with your colleagues more time probably with your colleagues than with your loved ones so if we're needing some assistance in our personal lives to help us understand the people that we love we definitely need assistance in our workplaces to help us understand the people that we deal more with more often every day of our lives now I will also bring your attention that at work, you are what the transactional analysts call a parent, a child, and an adult simultaneously. It means that you bring different needs, uh, states, to any transaction. Uh, as a result, I, I want to talk about some great ideas that have come from the, the personal development space, which may also be applicable to team dynamics. And that is, the, there's a book, I haven't read it, but it's called The Five Languages of Love. And in it, it goes on to explain that couples, when they're dealing with one another, might have very different languages of love. Say, there are five words of affirmation, quality time, gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. Now, if you're a person who values and your love language, as they call it, is words of affirmation, and you're partnered with somebody who's... Uh, uh, love language is physical touch, then sometimes you will have an intractable problem where somebody feels that they need love and affection and are looking for words of affirmation and somebody feels that the way to provide that might just be through physical touch. There can be a whole range of other dynamics at play, quality time, gifts, physical, acts of, uh, <laughs> physical touch and acts of service. So what are these love language equivalents in your team and what do people value? Well, this comes down to uh, something we'll discuss in a second about work styles. So, um, there's also one final thing that I'd like to bring into the teams. Most teams in most modern workplaces are uh, definitely of the uh, male and female composition. And gender matters not just because men and women are different, and they are, but because of inequality and because of the potential for bullying. Um, so let's talk about how we make sense of all of these different um, backgrounds and beliefs, personality types, love languages or work language equivalents, uh, our nuances of modality, um, gender, and, and find out how we can make this work. So <clears throat> with work styles, there are a number of different things that people could value. Now, uh, if we were together face to face, at this point I'd be handing out some materials that gave you, say, 20 characteristics that people may consider valuable in the team. And then I'm going to ask you to choose only five. Now, in this scenario, we would look at the way that people um, 
in the team and their various roles, so the management people, the leadership and the followership people, who are all the team members together, view different qualities and rate them as important in the coming together of a team. 